So today on the bench we have this Ego Blower and this is the LB5300. So this is the 530 CFM blower. I just thought we'd take this one apart and look into it using a number two Phillips bit here with a long shank. We'll get into this pretty quick. We'll speed the video up here. A little bit of background about this blower. It, it came from a viewer. His name is Denny. He contacted me back in December of last year, maybe November of last year, and sent it in December. And the story behind this blower is he was about to move and didn't really want it as junk anymore, but he had tried to put fuses in it. I think it run for a while with a fuse he replaced, and then it quit running. As he stacked the fuses up and tried to solder them on, it kept blowing the fuses immediately. So he contacted me about paying the shipping on it, and I could just have it for a video to see if we could repair it. So here we go. Right away we see the fuses that uh, he did stack on there. He's cleaned a lot of the controller up for us where the silicone potting is. And just like that, we have our electronics out. And this is our static grounding wire. Let's take it off the tube here and all the electronics and the blowers out. The BODC motor feels really, really smooth. You can feel the magnets and everything as tight as it should be and um, moving as free as it should be. So just from experience, it feels good. Now we're going to get our meter out. And yeah, the, the fuse is definitely opened here between our 56 volts in and across to our plus or positive rail. We go to continuity mode here so you can hear it. And we don't have nothing there to fuse this blow, but yeah, across the rail to ground, dead short. So, yeah, dead short, dead short. Everything's going across like it's a dead short, but it could just be one phase of one out, or just one output lead here. So, if we take these uh, BLDC motor leads a loose, we'll be able to tell if it's just one, one actual output phase. Because see, our motor. It's going to basically be just a dead short across because it's just windings, three different windings. So, yep. So now as we separate out, we still see we're getting the low ohms across, but some's lower than others. So let's check. Um, yeah, let's check the brown one here. It had the lowest. See, it's almost like a dead short. What do others have like a 500 ohm right now with what's going on? That one's actually a dead short back to the positive and the negative rail. So let's go ahead and remove the controller board. As I said, Denny's already um, took a lot of the potting off around where the fuses and the leads are. And he may have even taken this out by the looks of it. It's cleaned up pretty well. So that'll save a lot of time on video. So we pull the heat sink off we see the thermal pad did lift off and since we got to remove this thermal pad here and we'll speed the video up and get through it but we'll definitely have to make sure we put our thermal pad back after the repair these are high current devices but they have to have good thermal takeaway so now that we get it cleaned up a little better let's take it under the microscope a little bit of hot air. As we can see here, the paths for Q5 and Q13 are going to be very similar. As well as like the two right MOSFETs. They're just not all populated here for this for this model. But we do see we want to concentrate our heat more on the bottom based on this Q13 showing. So we want to concentrate just a little bit more heat on the bottom. That's your larger pad. And of course for the other one, when we take Q8 off, it's going to be the upper. But here with my hot air station set at about 380C and my speed's on about 3. And we removed pretty pretty easy job there. By the way, that's my uh, 858D hot air station. It's a little cheap hot air station, but it does pretty good. And as mentioned, this MOSFET here is going to be on the upper part of the chip here. As we, we try to concentrate just a little bit more at the top. And we're starting to move here.
And there we go, we're off. That's what it looks like. So now with the MOSFETs off, let's see if we clear across a positive rail. All right. So the brown lead phase output is now clear. And as we see here under the microscope, uh, yeah, dead short on this MOSFET. So we're definitely going to replace both of these. And this is the only replacement at this time I could find that's in stock. This is the CSD 18533. And it's a 60 volt rated 100 amp instead of a 100 volt 100 amp or 80 volt 80 amp. And some of them even 75 volt 80 amp. Um, this is several of the ones that I have seen in the past on controllers. So Ego used a lot of different uh, MOSFETs of this type. The next fit. Uh, VSONP8 version MOSFETs. I would rather use the 100 volt 100 amp, but if you look, they're just not available. Um, it's hard, to, it's actually hard to find them. So I had to go all the way down to a 60 volt version, and it wasn't but six in stock, and I bought all of them. So that's what I'm going to use on this repair. If you can find the 75 volt, 80 volt, or 100 volt, I, I definitely think that's a no brainer to grab them. But I've waited like two months for this repair and I uh, finally got some in stock. Hopefully after the posting of this video they'll be more available. As I showed with that DigiKey screenshot, they showed that some was available starting in a, a couple months. They're hoping to have some more available. So. That's a little bit of Amtec Flux. and. See if we can just reflow this chip in place. Yep, it looks pretty good. Move it around just a little bit. Yep, I like it. I want to do Q8 next. Q5 went pretty well. Get a little bit closer up here on Q8 so you can see maybe a little bit better. It's like I didn't quite get enough solder on the lower pads. On this one, I'm going to have to go back and touch that up just a little. Push it up a little bit. There we go. That looks pretty good. I like it. Yep, so this is what we look like. All the pads look good. I'm going to clean up here and look, but I probably have to hit that lower pad just a little bit with my soldering iron. Notice here how we we are turned, as mentioned, Q5 and Q8 are turned in opposite directions, as in each phase is done so with the originals as well. So for high current capability, they would actually populate it all and, and put another 100 ohm resistor for the gate where like R76 is showing there. And you could actually double the current. So here I'm just going to add some low melt solder to these um, little tower fuses here and go ahead and remove them. This will just make it easier why I ain't got to get out my 200 watt iron. Just this low melt solder mixed with the unleaded solder. It'll help a lot with the removal process. And I'm going to probably order some of these bell fuses because these little fuses are almost $5 a piece. To me, that's just a lot of money, especially when you're trying to fix a board and it might not be repaired. You don't want to waste five or six bucks in an attempt. I'll probably use an automotive fuse here for testing for a while. But in, as a long-term fix, I think I'm going to recommend these Bell Power Solution fuses from DigiKey because they're less than a dollar a piece. The dimensions seem to be very similar to the little fuse 30 amps. So I'm going to clean off some of this low temp solder and going to add back some 
leaded solder, a little bit of rosin flux on here. I'm going to bend the tips on a 30 amp cheap automotive fuse here for testing and if you don't think this is absolutely the best fuse for this it, it probably isn't but it's a lot better than jumping it out while we're testing and I've had good success testing with these so back now with that fuse in place and the MOSFETs replacing all cleaned up we're looking pretty good here so that's what our fuse will look like when we get the bell fuses in to replace for right now we're going to use this cheap 30 amp automotive fuse for testing so now we bring our meter over and we go from a positive rail oh yeah like 2.2 2.3 mega on that's great we'll go across and check them all from the brown 2.2 meg yellow 2.3 meg blue yep 2.3 meg awesome ain't ready to test bring over our VLDC motor and let's hook it up make sure we keep our colors matched up or if not it'll, it'll want to suck instead of blue it was not designed for that we'll hook it up to a battery here and make sure our capacitor is not touching anything here We definitely don't want to use the turbo switch. Now on the workbench, we'll be done sucked up all the tools and items on the bench. I got the pot all the way down, all the way counterclockwise. And we'll just pulse test this on the bench. Yeah, make sure our capacitor's not touching anything here. And here we go. All right. awesome how about a little up close look here I'm going to be careful here to cover it up we'll hit turbo really quick It's hard to hold this thing. Hard to hold. It. Awesome. Let's put it together. I'm going to make sure my thermal pad here covers over the face of the MOSFETs. As mentioned earlier, I, I had to cut that pad and put it where it be over the face of the six MOSFETs for thermal transfer. We'll speed this video up some so you won't have to watch the whole reassembly it takes a while so I almost forgot to put our static discharge strip in here it kind of goes in like so on the tube and of course that black wire goes back to the the little metal wire strip and the handle to help keep the static from building up so bad across the tube so one thing about this video is a little bit different from some of the others where I have showed troubleshooting down to this point and uh, had to retrofit with a cheaper BODC little controller. I've also had a chainsaw that we replaced the MOSFETs on and got going probably several years ago, but it was done without hot air. So this time is the first time I've showed the blower be repaired like so and had hot air and the microscope. So maybe it's a little better detail. So hopefully you think it'd be a little bit better um, repair here.
just going to speed through putting this together here. Put the bottom base on. I guess you could choose to leave this off if you want. It does help it stand up. moved my hand I think it blew everything off my workbench awesome I hope you like this video if you did please like share and subscribe I'll also have a link down in the video description for some of the things we used here as well as some tools and other items I found helpful on my workbench any link you click on helps support the channel and I greatly appreciate it so thanks so much for watching and God bless